Okay, uh, thank you everybody for coming uh, or staying. Uh, so this talk is gonna be about NoSQL, no injections. Uh, my name is Wayne Huang. I am co-founder and CTO to Amurai Technologies. Uh, and my colleague, Huang Ding, uh, was a founding member. Uh, he was the first person to our Amurai Special Force team uh, more than four years ago. Uh, this research was mostly done by Kuan, uh, while I am the, uh, I will be the presenter because I speak better English. Uh, most of Amurais are based out of Taipei, uh, and we're all from Taiwan. Um, so the research, uh, this research started uh, when we were crawling, uh, when we were crawling um, so much of the web uh, to identify malware, and we had to ourselves um, uh, implement a NoSQL solution and, and basically just retire our old relational database solution. Um, so so Amrise has, has two teams. One is uh, on static analysis. So we do, uh, we write parsers and compilers and we check for vulnerabilities inside code. So actually this is more related to that team. But this research actually started from the other team uh, crawling the web uh, in search for malware and because the data was getting much too big for uh, traditional relational databases to handle. So that team, uh, the Hackler team, started to, to do this research, uh, but then this research would then actually benefit uh, the code secure team, because as we see more and more C uh, NoSQL uh, code, uh, we need to know how to scan for vulnerabilities inside that code. And this is how the, uh, the talk came about. <clears throat> so the slides are on SlideShare now, uh, and if you go to my Twitter, uh, you would get the link to uh, the three of our talks this year at DEF CON. Uh, the next talk is going to be tomorrow. Uh, it's about uh, how we automatically cluster the malware that we find uh, using OBOX. So today we're going to be talking about what is NoSQL, types of NoSQL, who uses NoSQL, and so where the threats are, uh, no, the NoSQL architecture, security issues surrounding NoSQL and different families of NoSQL, and prevention and detection, and how NoSQL is affecting the uh, current security technologies. So what is NoSQL? NoSQL technologies do not, uh, uh, com some common misconceptions. NoSQL technologies do not support SQL. Uh, the fact is, a lot of them do. NoSQL technologies are not vulnerable to threats such as SQL injection because there's no SQL. Um, one of the most commonly accepted definitions would be NoSQL is not only a SQL, and the storage itself is a non-relational DBMS, uh, which can be semi-structured and schema-less or sometimes perhaps even schema-free, uh, for example, <clears throat> in a key-value data store. So types of NoSQL, there are <clears throat> a lot of families to NoSQL. Uh, key-value da uh, key based databases, column-based databases, document-based databases, graph-based databases, object-based databases, etc. So what's challenging for security researchers today is NoSQL is resembled by its diversity. There are a lot of families, and then within the same family of NoSQL, uh, implementations differ widely. And that presents a very big challenge as we see it. So why NoSQL? Why do people uh, need to use the NoSQL technology? Well, mostly for two very important reasons, performance and scalability. So who'd use NoSQL, and so what's the impact? Uh, cloud computing users or providers or SaaS vendors, social network services providers, portal websites, uh, and uh, basically um, people that needs to process large amounts of data, and typically they would use a mixture of databases which include both SQL databases and NoSQL databases, and 
that is, for example, what, uh, what our current implementation is as well. So what's changed from the past, from SQL to NoSQL? So here's a typical NoSQL architecture. We have the web application and web services uh, in the front. And in the center is the client library, uh, which the web application and web services interact with. Um, and then below is the NoSQL data storage. Uh, and the client library is going to be the focus for security researchers as well as the attackers, because that's where uh, the web application and web services are interfacing with the data storage. So the client library implementation right now uh, has no standards such as ODBC, JDBC, ADO, PDO, etc. So these questions would strongly affect uh, the security standing and aspects of these client libraries. How is it implemented? What interfaces does it support? Does it support a query interface? And here you see a uh, CouchDB, oh, sorry, a CouchDB implementation of its uh, SQL interface. Oh, I'm sorry, CouchQL. And as you, as you can see, it looks very much like SQL, and in fact, it is a subset of SQL. While CouchDB it itself is a NoSQL database. And so here, this, uh, how this client library is implemented will affect what types uh, of vulnerabilities would exist in this particular implementation. And so let's make room and let's look for, let, let, let's look at the old vectors versus the new vectors. So in the old days, there was only one horizontal vector, the SQL, right? And so within that horizon, you would have, we would have ODBC, JDBC, ADO, PDO, what have you, for us and for, or for the attackers to do their SQL injections. Now, we have key value based databases and they may implement two versions, at least two versions of their client libraries, the QL-like and the non-QL-like. And these two different versions would have a lot of different implementations and the same thing would be happening to column-based NoSQL databases, and the same thing happens to document-based NoSQL databases. So let's make room. The same thing happens to graph-based uh, NoSQL databases, and the same thing happens to object-based NoSQL databases. So this is the landscape as we see it today. So as a vendor that, uh, that developed static analysis tools to scan for uh, security vulnerabilities uh, before we, uh, for, for, for example, for database ma manipulation, uh, for command injection, we had to scan for uh, uh, only a few categories, and SQL injection was among these categories. But now, if we want to support, uh, if we want to scan for no SQL vulnerabilities, we end up with a landscape that looks like that down there. So perhaps it was a blessing that in the past, the notion of RDBMS matured, uh, the notion of SQL matured, and SQL, implementa uh, SQL implementation standards matured as well, ODBC, JDBC, et cetera. And therefore, as new websites came out, as new frameworks came out, as new languages came out, Everyone basically followed existing standards, ODBC, JDBC, ADO, PDO, etc. right? And so they weren't creating their own ways to access the database. Basically, even when new um, languages came out sometimes, they follow the SQL standard and implement some SQL-like interface or adopt ODBC or JDBC. But today, new implementations for yet another programming language's support to use yet another family of NoSQL is invented as needed. And that creates that picture there. 
And, and this is basically the threat that we see today. We see very, very few research on this topic. Uh, apparently, uh, all, uh, um, the open source scanners, as well as the, the commercial scanners right now, uh, haven't put a lot of effort into studying uh, threats that exist here. However, uh, more and more and more websites are starting to use NoSQL technologies. So we've covered the general topics. Now let's look at the specific examples of vulnerabilities. Um, so we'll be, we'll be looking at uh, some examples of NoSQL vulnerabilities, including connection pollution, JSON injection, view injection, key brute forcing, and, and key brute forcing, sorry. Connection pollution, uh, using CouchDB as example, and CouchDB, um, the entire CouchDB interface is implemented <clears throat> in RESTful, uh, which allows for uh, cross database or cross pull access through RESTful. Uh, and all of CouchDB's global and database handlers are also implemented in RESTful. Um, so the, this creates some uh, attack vectors that are easier than before. Um, for example, um, if we can manipulate uh, the connector here, if we can somehow manipulate the connector here, uh, then without further manipulation, just by manipulating the connector itself, we can restart a CouchDB database. And here is the list of all of, uh, well, some of CouchDB's uh, handlers that would allow us to execute a lot of uh, commands if we are able to manipulate the connector. And uh, for example, uh, the configuration itself is also um, in a RESTful interface. So by manipulating the connector, we can also directly see the configuration of the database, uh, which, which, which actually took a lot more steps in SQL injection. And here, uh, and a lot, of people, a, lot of people, a lot of people thought that, okay, so you can still manipulate data flow or you can still manipulate um, SQL commands in a NoSQL implementation. However, uh, real SQLs are very powerful. Uh, MySQL database is a very powerful set of SQL commands which allowed you to execute uh, system commands, for example. And then, uh, so even if your NoSQL, even if my NoSQL implementation implements a SQL-like interface, well, pro most likely there won't, you won't be able to execute uh, database I mean, you, you can Maybe you can, uh, you know, manipulate, manipulate my database a bit, uh, but you can't execute system commands. Well, that, that might not be true, uh, because in this example that you see here, this is again CouchDB. Uh, if I am able to manipulate the configuration uh, through the RESTful interface, then I can change uh, the, the, um, the JavaScript interpreter of CouchDB, and as you see here, we've changed it to js2.exe, which can be a file that we uh, put onto the system or an arbitrary uh, system command or um, system executable. So executing database, uh, e executing arbitrary um, commands through manipulation of the, uh, the client interface is possible as well. And then what makes it harder? Um, even when an injection vector exists, cross DB, cross databases is difficult. Uh, cross databases was very easy with SQL injection because the SQL command supported um, naming of databases. So you can jump databases once you can manipulate SQL command. Um, but it is absolutely not true